Hello everyone. So today I am going to be talking about how to define and customize dashboards inside Azure. Um, to start off this training session, um, what I've done is I've gone ahead and logged into portal.azure.com uh, with my credentials. Um, kind of skipped that part just because that's pretty straightforward. Just go to portal.azure.com and just log in and then you'll be presented with a similar screen to what I you what I'm currently looking at. So when you first come into Azure, um, I think there's a way to customize this option actually. Um, but when you first come in, um, typically if you haven't done any customizations to your Azure environment, you're gonna come into the home page, um, which kind of looks like what we're seeing here. Um, it's kind of like a dashboard, but not quite. Um, so today we're working specifically with dashboards. So to do this, all we have to do is click on dashboard. So I just want to talk a little bit about um, why you'd want to use a dashboard and how um, how they're pretty useful when you start working with larger Azure implementations. If you're kind of a small scale shop and you don't have a whole lot going on in your Azure environment, uh, you're probably quite likely not going to have too much that you'd necessarily want to track via a dashboard. But if you are a larger implementation or a larger shop, there's going to be use cases for having a dashboard customized to a specific scenario. So one way that a dashboard is quite useful is for tracking specific things that might be specific to a team that you're on. So if you're working like for me, uh, I do a lot of Sitecore development or a custom .NET uh, application development. The team that I would be associated with, with would tip, tip, technically be kind of the application development uh, team, whereas the IT infrastructure team might be a separate team. If there's a DevOps team, that would be potentially a, a, a separate team as well. Um, and what you could kind of do is as a team lead on a project, you can kind of start defining dashboards that relate to your team. And these dashboards can be shared across your entire team uh, with proper configuration of uh, IAM. I'm going to show how today uh, to create a dashboard, how to share it and where it goes. I'm going to talk about how you can upload new dashboards uh, or download existing dashboards. And I'm going to talk about some of the features that you can add as part of the dashboard, what is also known as a tile. I'm not going to go too far into more advanced topics, actually how to define uh, these different groups and how to pr uh, apply permissions to different dashboard groups. I'm not going to really go into that. Um, just kind of a simple introduction into the topic. So to get started, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new dashboard. I've actually already had one. I just want to just create another one. We're just gonna call this Sitecore 2 dashboard because I actually already had a first one created uh, before I started this video. So you give it a name, that's a dashboard. At, at this current point, this dashboard only relates to you. Um, so you can have private dashboards, uh, which is very useful to know. If you're coming on to an Azure implementation and let's say you're a consultant like I typically am, you might not want to create dashboards that everybody can see. You, you might want to create personalized dashboards that have, uh, that have the elements that pertain to your specific scenarios. So this is where you would create a dashboard. It would be a private dashboard and only you could see it. Now, once we've created the dashboard, there is kind of this grid format for placing tiles. And I don't see it on this screen, but typically there's also kind of lines in the in the screen. So there's kind of representations of different screen sizes. I, I must admit I'm on a smaller screen, so maybe I don't see that as much. So the first part is, is naming it, and then you're gonna start placing tiles. And you can customize what type of tiles, and also uh, you can customize you know where they go the size of them and a lot of the tiles also have specific settings that you can specify so let's just drop a clock tile if it wants to do it for me there you go um so it's picked up the um, pacific time so it, that's correct but you can switch it if you wanted to you can edit this and say your arizona time i, I that doesn't change it much because that's the same uh, time zone but you could change it to something much crazier than where I'm at currently. Uh, Buenos Aires uh, in, uh, I believe that's Brazil. And you can also change the time format if you wanted to as well. 
Nothing crazy here with this one, but keep in mind all the tiles are gonna have these similar types of options. You can also customize the size of it. So you can make it a two by one if you want just something really small. Make it a one by one. You can change it back to a two by two and you can delete it, of course. If you've placed it and you're like, man, I don't know if I really want this. Uh, you can create a dashboard where it represents different regions that traffic comes to your site. You could create a bunch of clocks if you really wanted to. It really is up to you, especially if you're customizing these, this dashboard as a private dashboard. Uh, you can have dozens of dashboards for yourself that represents dashboards that you're creating for yourself that could serve different purposes that you might have. So I'll go ahead and say, mark this done. Uh, I'm just gonna assume I'm in Buenos Aires. Some other options that you have, uh, there's a lot of options, I'll be honest, 214 different options, but there's some really cool ones in here. One of the cool ones to check out is the markdown one. So this one allows you to basically write down markdown. So um, if you're creating a shared dashboard for a group, you might wanna write instructions into this uh, markdown file. Just write whatever you want here. And you can see, so you could provide links. Uh, this could potentially contain images. If you wanted to um, provide a, a representation of the input uh, infrastructure that's uh, used for Sitecore, for example, could actually upload a, or, or a mention a image uh, of a diagram that represents the infrastructure. So if that whoever comes in and starts doing Sitecore development work, they can actually have a good understanding of uh, the structure of, of the Sitecore implementation before they start making changes. And lastly, uh, you know, you can make this pretty much anything you want and you can rearrange these as well. So these, I feel like this mimics some other function that I've seen. Maybe it's uh, kind of like the start menu over here. Um, you have tiles here as well, and it's kind of the same sort of uh, setup as that. Um, some other cool ones that I think would be worth checking out, although there's, like I said, there's what, 214 different tiles that you might want to look at is ARM Actions. Uh, this is if you wanted to start building some more complex uh, functionality from your dashboard, let's say you wanted to uh, restart one of your VMs, for example, from your dashboard. Um, you can start doing that by adding an ARM Actions tile and that will allow you to actually run commands kind of gives you an idea of what what you uh, what options you have and here again you can done customizing and it just goes away this one does not provide any resizing options uh, so it's kind of just a kind of basic tile um, if you have VMs or if you have some web apps running you can actually place uh, application insights data or, or charts in here. So if you wanted to, I mean, here's an example, I can get all the list of resources. I don't really want that. That's actually, I already have a dashboard that has pretty much that all listed out. Some other options, just, I mean, there's a lot of options here. I, I won't go into too much detail because that's not really the point. Uh, play around with these and see, uh, you know, disk reads for VMs. I mean, you'd have to configure this for a VM that you might have currently in place. Um, and those were for classic mode, which is an old uh, version of uh, Azure, Azure Classic. Um, so if you don't have any classic VMs or anything like that, you wouldn't want to necessarily place one of these. Let's just go ahead and complete the customization process. So basically now we've got a dashboard. If you want to switch your dashboards, you can do that. You can go back to the default dashboard, which was the one I originally had created for this. Um, and you can also you know, go back to the site or one if you want. Um, you're switching between your private ones. Um, you can also see a full list of all dashboards by clicking browse all dashboards. Um, so you can see I'm private, I'm viewing my private dashboards currently. You would also potentially see uh, shared dashboards if there was any in this instance, but there isn't. Um, but I, I can also go to share dashboards. Currently, I do not have any shared dashboards, and that's actually what I'm gonna do here in a second. I'm gonna create this, I'm gonna take that shared, or that um, uh, Sitecore 2 dashboard that I created. So let's switch on over to the Sitecore 2 dashboard. And I'm actually gonna share this out. Uh, so others that log into my Azure environment could potentially see this, this dashboard. So to do that, uh, all we have to do is click on share. And now it brings up 
dashboard name, uh, subscription name, doesn't really matter about that too much, publish to the dashboards uh, resource group, which I'll mention here in a second, and then there's a location. So the way dashboards become, once you start sharing them, they, they essentially become resources and you would, uh, as I've probably mentioned previously in other videos, is that a resource belongs in a resource group. So if you start publishing out these shared resource or these shared dashboards, they're going to be uh, going into a resource group. And so you need to potentially check the option publish to the dashboards resource group. So let's just go ahead and do that. Once you do that, then you can also look into uh, finding ways to limit who can access these shared dashboards. Uh, just like this, this title up here says sharing and access control. This dashboard is currently private. To share this dashboard, publish it as an Azure resource, essentially what we're doing. Uh, Azure, uh, Azure role-based access control will determine who has access to the dashboard. Access to individual tiles can differ from access to the dashboard itself, which is also important to note. Uh, so we'll go ahead and publish. And now it's gonna go ahead and create the, the resource group as well as the resource. And, and then that's where you start getting into more things now now you can manage the users that have access to this this resource i'm not going to go too much into that today i'm going to talk more about access control in the future in future training tutorials and i'll talk probably at some point about specific customizations that you can do to these dashboards to make them even more advanced than than this basic example so since we just created it we can go to resource groups see the resource group that we created so dashboards I created an essential US and we have the Sitecore 2 dashboard represented here. So we can click on this and now we have a representation of this resource or that dashboard as a resource. Um, if we go back to dashboards, another options that you have is that you can actually download these. So essentially you can upload these just the same way as you would do um, an ARM template. Uh, essentially it has the same format. So you could actually create these dashboards using JSON in an ARM template format um, and then upload them into your organization. Um, if you're a consulting agency, what you could theoretically do is, let's say for me, I work with a lot of Sitecore implementations. I could come up with a bunch of dashboards that represent the type of data I would like to review across multiple implementations. Now, keeping in mind that the names for those implementations could change. Um, so we would have to keep that in mind. We might have to make modifications to the ARM templates per client, but it would give us a kind of starting point. We could keep it in source control and we can make changes to it for a new client and then deploy it up to our Azure environment that's specific to a client. So you can download these. So I just downloaded it. Uh, let's just go ahead and open it real quick just to see what it looks like. Like I said, it's just like a ARM template. Um, so that just gives you an idea. Um, you, can, you can start customizing this and then you could upload it again if you wanted to. I don't see the point uh, other than the, the, the point I just made, which is where you might wanna manage these from a source control perspective. Um, the, the direction that you're eventually gonna take when you start working with Azure is infrastructure as code, which I'm gonna be covering here at some point in the future uh, with just code itself. So if you were going down that path, you might have all this stuff as ARM templates that you manage via code, and then you deploy those up into your uh, Azure environments. All right, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, that's all I pretty much wanted to cover for dashboards. I know this is kind of a, if, if you've only been working with Azure for a little bit, this might be a kind of a new topic and you might find that now that when you log into maybe a client's Azure environment or maybe your own Azure environment, you might discover a bunch of new Azure dashboards that you didn't know existed. And don't be afraid to uh, create new ones, create ones that are private to you. Note the fact that we're actually now seeing in our list a shared one, which is represented with an icon that represents that it's shared or shared across multiple people. And then you also have your private ones. So feel free, you have access access to Azure, either via your own organization or via a client. Just create your own Azure dashboards and just do that to test the scenarios that you wanna do or, or whatever it may be. Put all your favorite uh, reporting systems all into one dashboard and then you can review your entire system just like that without having to dig too deep in app application insights or anything like that. 
right, that's it for today's uh, tutorial. All right, that's it.